Are you planning a trip to Istanbul? Then you have come to the right place. We're Jess and Miles, and after three years of traveling around the world, we are currently living here in Istanbul, Turkey. In today's video, we are going to show you how to spend the perfect day here in Istanbul if you only have 24 hours. While we believe that Istanbul deserves so much more time than 24 hours, we do understand for some that's all the time you'll have. It's gonna be a busy day, so get ready. Real quick, if you're starting to plan your trip to Istanbul, you probably already know the city can be overwhelming. There's so much to do, so much information out there, and with a short amount of time here, there are so many opportunities to get it wrong. Let us help you. We always have a more rewarding experience in a new place when we know someone who lives there and can help us travel more like a local. We want to be that for you here in Istanbul. We have created a comprehensive digital guide because we want to give you that local experience and share with you the city we have fallen in love with. It's less than $10, and if it isn't exactly what you need, we will give you all your money back. If you're interested, just go to the link in the description or the pinned comments to learn more about it. We're starting things off here in Sultan Ahmed Square. This is the heart of the old city where many of the main tourist attractions are located, so it's the perfect place to start your day. Most of the main sites don't open until 9 a.m., but we recommend that you get here by 7.30 or 7.45 so you can walk around the square when it's nice and quiet. Trust us, it gets crazy later in the day. It's about 7.30 now, so we have about an hour before we're going to get in line for Hagia Sophia, so let's go check out the area. Even though none of the main sites are open yet, there is something very special about being here in the early morning. This area is where the oldest and most famous historic sites are located. You can enjoy Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque from the outside and walk around the Hippodrome. The Hippodrome is located right in the heart of Sultan Ahmed. It was once a great stadium that held chariot races for thousands of people. Little is left of the Hippodrome today, but there are a few remaining artifacts you can see, including the Egyptian obelisk that was brought here by the Romans from Egypt. This area has served as the center of activity for Istanbul for thousands of years, and we feel like there is no better time to enjoy it than the early morning hours. It is really nice to get to explore this square early in the morning before there's no less than a thousand people here. But one thing you will sadly miss out on with only one day here in Istanbul is Turkish breakfast. But it is definitely worth getting up and getting here early. And even if you only have 24 hours here in Istanbul, hopefully you have more time here in Turkey so you can get Turkish breakfast somewhere else. And it is 8.30. There's already a line forming outside of Hagia Sophia, so we're gonna go get in line so we can be one of the first inside when they open at nine. If you're coming to Hagia Sophia, which we can only assume that you are, one of the biggest pieces of advice that we can give you is to get in line around 8.30 so you can be one of the first people inside. There are already 100 plus people in line ahead of us, but trust us, this is as short as this line is going to be all day long. Also, something else we should mention, when you're exploring Istanbul, chances are you're going to be visiting at least one mosque, if not several, so it's important to dress accordingly. That means covering your shoulders, wearing long pants, and generally loose-fitting clothing. It's pretty easy for us today because it's mid-November, so it's cold. <laughs> also, for females, you're going to be required to cover your hair inside the mosque, so I always bring my own scarf, but some of the mosques will have something for you to either rent or borrow. Update, it's 8.45, and there are now a couple hundred people behind us in line. Hagia Sophia is one of the main tourist attractions in Istanbul. It was originally built as a church around 1,500 years ago. Hagia Sophia is a great example of Istanbul's rich and diverse history that has been influenced by many civilizations. It has been a Greek Orthodox church, a Catholic church, a museum, and a mosque over its lifetime. It has served different purposes, but it has always been one of the most impressive buildings in the skyline of Istanbul. It's incredible to think that such a massive building has stood the test of time throughout multiple empires over 1,500 years. It has survived earthquakes, fires, and wars, and it is still in active use today. Christians contributed the Grand Dome and Biblical mosaics when it was first built. Then the minarets, the hanging chandeliers, and calligraphy were added when it was converted to a mosque. When you explore this building, you get to experience the unbelievable mix of cultures that makes this city so unique. This is a massive building, and when you're standing outside looking at it, it seems like it would have hundreds of different rooms. But once you're in here, it really is just one massive open space. The Blue Mosque is just across the square from Hagia Sophia, and it's actually been under renovation for the past several years, so most of it's covered up but they've been uncovering more and more of it. So we'll take a quick look inside just to show you what it looks like. Depending on when you come, I would just try and figure out the status of the renovations, and then you can decide whether or not you want to visit while you're here. Also, 
The Blue Mosque opens at 8.30, so you may be tempted to come over here first. Don't do it! I'm telling you, get in line at Hagia Sophia first, and then you can come visit the Blue Mosque after. Once the renovations are finished, that'll probably change the strategy quite a bit, but for now, there's really not much to see in the Blue Mosque due to all the renovations. There is so much more to see in this area, and if you have more than one day in Istanbul, a couple of our other favorite historic sites are the Basilica Cistern and Top Coffee Palace, but with only one day here, you're going to have to make some tough choices, so we're gonna keep moving, and it's time to head to the Grand Bazaar. The Grand Bazaar is one of the oldest and largest covered bazaars in the world. It's over 500 years old. There are 61 covered streets and somewhere around 4,000 different shops. So I'm sure you can imagine, you can find almost anything you can think of inside this bazaar. We always find markets to be way more fun when you're actually looking to buy something. But to be completely honest, we don't really shop here because <laughs> <laughs> the prices are way higher than other places you could find in Istanbul. It's still fun to come here and walk around though. Okay, it's about 11 o'clock, and so far today, we have explored Sultan Ahmed Square, Hagia Sophia, the Blue Mosque, and we're just now leaving the Grand Bazaar. Honestly, you could spend a lot more time <laughs> at the Grand Bazaar, but we have a lot more to see. <laughs> By the way, all the shops extend well beyond the Grand Bazaar, yes. out into the streets. We're going to head to Suleimane Mosque, which is just up the hill, so it takes a bit more effort to get there, but hopefully that means it'll be less crowded than the sites in Sultan Ahmed Square. Jess might be able to do Istanbul in 24 hours, but I'm having a hard time keeping up with her. Even if you only have 24 hours, you've got to make it up to the top of this hill and check out this mosque. I can almost guarantee you there are no less than two, three thousand people in Sultan Ahmed Square right now. And it's so quiet here. Look at this. Also, look at this amazing courtyard. This courtyard is incredible. This mosque is seriously one of our favorite mosques in all of Istanbul for many reasons. One of them is this courtyard, one of them is the inside, and then one of them is the view. And finally, the amount of people. Yes. That's a big one. Maybe that's number one. <laughs> it's the quietest place in Istanbul right now. <sighs> so nice in here. The Suleimaniye Mosque is located on top of one of the seven hills of Istanbul's old city. Most visitors will see it from afar, however, few make the trip up the hill, making it a surprisingly quiet place to visit. The courtyard alone, with its tall stone arches, is worth the climb up the hill. As you make your way inside, you will appreciate the open design and peaceful atmosphere. Suleimaniye is one of our favorite mosques in all of Istanbul. And as a huge bonus, check out this view from just outside the mosque. From up here, you have an amazing view across the Golden Horn to the Northern Peninsula. So far this morning, we've been exploring the Southern Peninsula, and we have a couple more stops over here, but we plan to head that way after lunch. Okay, it's time to head back down the hill. We are making our way to the Spice Bazaar, which is also called the Egyptian Bazaar. You'll probably see signs pointing you towards the Egyptian Bazaar. And and that's not because there's anything particularly Egyptian inside of it. It's because back when it was constructed in the 1600s, Egypt was a part of the Ottoman Empire and they used taxes from Egypt to pay for it. Jess is giving me some feedback. I didn't say anything. <laughs> she said that sounded boring because nobody wants to hear about taxes. The Spice Bazaar is not nearly as large as the Grand Bazaar. It's really just a small L shape, so it'll probably only take you 15 or so minutes to walk through here. It usually takes us a little bit longer because Jess typically gets talked into buying something from one of these stalls. But in all seriousness, it is a good place to get Turkish delight or some tea or obviously any spice you could imagine. But no shopping for us today, it's time for lunch. And the place that we are going to for lunch just so happens to be right outside the Spice Bazaar. Turkish food is absolutely amazing. And since we've already skipped breakfast this morning, we've got to make the rest of our meals count today. We got one Adana kebab and one eggplant kebab, which also comes with meat. You might think that you're getting a vegetarian meal with uh, eggplant kebab, but you're not. Very meat heavy as well. Look at that bite. Hi, Dad. Oh. I could spend 24 hours just eating Turkish food. 
many times we do. We honestly love everything we have tried at this restaurant and we have been here many times, but our most favorite thing here is their canefe. This might just be the best canefe we've found in the city. I dropped them on my pants. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So good. It has been a full day so far. It's nearly one o'clock. I'd say we're doing pretty good on time. Like Jess mentioned, everything we've seen so far has been on the Southern Peninsula in the old city, but we're currently walking over the Galata Bridge because we're gonna spend the rest of the afternoon on the Northern Peninsula in the new city. You are in fact still in Europe on the Northern Peninsula. Asia is to the east of the Bosphorus. So unfortunately with only 24 hours, we're not gonna be able to show you the Asian side of Istanbul. If you do have more time here, you should definitely go check out the Asian side. That's where we live. We love it. We might be a little biased, but it really is awesome. You need more than 24 hours here is the bottom line. Yeah. <laughs> we have almost made it across the Galata Bridge into the neighborhood of Karakoy. And from here, we're going to be heading up to the famous Istiklal Street. And while it's not very far, this area is very hilly. So we're going to be taking the Tunnel Metro up the hill to Istanbul Street. It's our next stop. And Jess, via voiceover, is going to tell you some cool stuff about the Tunnel Metro. The Tunnel Metro was built 150 years ago and is the second oldest subway in the world after the Tube in London. It connects the waterfront in Karakoy to the southern end of the famous Istiklal Street. This is a 1.6 kilometer pedestrian street full of shops and restaurants that runs from the Galata neighborhood up to Taksim Square. This area is often referred to as the heart of modern Istanbul. We always enjoy walking along Istiklal Street. It is busy day and night in this area, and there is tons of great shopping. But one of our favorite things to do is just to grab some ice cream and enjoy the walk. Opa! <laughs> yes. Yes, please, come on. Woo! I'm making this the extra for it. Woo! Yo, <laughs> fuck! I recognize we just had Kinefe, but when you're only in this in over 24 hours, you gotta do it. God. <laughs> so chewy. Turkish ice cream is pretty sticky if you've never had it before. It's got a pretty unique consistency. How's the pistachio? I like it. So it costs 75 Turkish lira for this ice cream, which is a lot. <laughs> but you're paying for the show, which is really fun. So yeah. it's worth it. We have made it to our final stop before sunset, and that is Galata Tower. We might be in the new city, but this is one of Istanbul's famous historic sites. It's roughly three o'clock, so you'd have plenty of time to go to the top of the tower and enjoy the incredible views, but we've already done that, so we're gonna insert some footage, walk around the neighborhood, and go to one of the many cafes here. Even if you don't wanna go to the top of the tower, this is still a really fun and cute neighborhood to explore. So, we'll show you around a bit. Also, first, insert tower footage. The medieval Galata Tower was built in the 1300s. The tower is over 65 meters tall, and for many years, it was used to help spot fires around the city. It costs around 10 US dollars to enter, and there is an elevator that will take you all the way to the top to enjoy the views. Even if you choose not to go up in Galata Tower, this neighborhood is worth a visit. You can explore the hilly streets and enjoy a coffee or a bite to eat at one of the many great cafes in the area. At first I was pretty sour about the really expensive coffee with a view of Galata Tower, but the people watching is worth every penny. This is the prime Instagram photo spot. Everyone lines up right here to take their shots. It's fun to watch. It's almost time for sunset and we have some options for you. You can, in theory, go up in Galata Tower and watch sunset with 300 of your closest friends. Or if you don't like being packed in like a sardine, like us, there are some rooftop terraces around this area that have a great view of Galata Tower and the old city. So that is our preferred way of watching sunset here in the Galata neighborhood. You can also find a spot in Karakoy to sit along the waterfront. These are all great options, but with only 24 hours in Istanbul, you're only going to get one sunset, so you really need to make it count. Our favorite way to experience sunset in Istanbul is on a boat in the Bosphorus. So it's time to head back down to Karakoy because that's where we'll be getting on the boat. 
I think we mentioned at some point today that it's mid-November, so the days are quite a bit shorter this time of year. If you were here in the summer, you'd have a little bit more time to explore the city before sunset. But no matter when you are here, we definitely think getting out on the water is something you have to do. After all, Istanbul is surrounded by the sea and it's such a big part of what makes the city so special. There are all kinds of different Bosphorus cruises, some that even take the full day. Obviously with only 24 hours, that's not an option for you. So a sunset cruise is perfect. When we say a sunset Bosphorus cruise, we're not talking about one of these huge boats with hundreds of people. We're talking about one of these smaller cabin cruiser boats with a small group. You could rent a boat out privately, but that's a bit over our budget. This small group trip that we're going on is surprisingly affordable, and we have a discount code if you buy our guide. Honestly, if you're two people traveling in Istanbul, our discount on the cruise basically pays for our guide. But in all seriousness, you should go on this sunset cruise. If we had family and friends coming to visit us, we would definitely do this. It's a must do here. All right, let's go. The Bosphorus is one of the most important bodies of water in history. Cruising up the Bosphorus at sunset is a great way to relax after a long day of exploring. It doesn't take too much time and fits perfectly into a busy itinerary. The cruise makes its way up the European side of the city before returning along the banks of the Asian coast. It will show you parts of the city that are challenging to fit into a short trip and it will give you views that you can only get from the water. At this point today, we have done roughly 20,000 steps exploring the city. And here we are getting to see so much more of Istanbul, except we're off our feet and out on the water. Isn't she beautiful in that beanie? <laughs> She's absolutely beautiful. I, truthfully, I mean, for one, it's warm, but for two, my hair was doing crazy things earlier, and I was like, Miles, you're not gonna be able to use any of this footage of me with my hair, so. Beanie it is. Dual purpose. But we're turning down the Asian side, so we're going with the wind, so it's not gonna be nearly as windy going back. Yeah, we have made it nearly to the second Bosphorus Bridge, and we are turning around to head down the Asian coast. And I know you might think that this video is almost over, but it's not. We still have dinner, a big dinner. A fun dinner planned. We are going to a mehane, which is something, if you only have 24 hours, you should do this. Definitely should do. Yep. These houses are amazing. I know we said we live on the Asian side, but not in one of these houses. No. <laughs> Someday. Yeah, Gotta maybe, sell a lot maybe of guides. One day. <laughs> you would never get to see all of this stuff. Even if you have multiple days here. Even in really. a week. Yeah. Oh, look at that cute little boat. Oh, it's so cute. Jess loves these cute little boats. They're actually pretty big boats, but they look little oh next to all the huge the ships that come through the Bosphorus. This, we call this a cabin cruiser. It is a it's yacht. It's huge. Yeah. Compared to the ferries, it's small, but really it's a, it's little a big boat. It's a little boat in the Bosphorus. <laughs> okay, we're gonna enjoy the sunset now. Look at, at the sun yeah. on that ship. I know, it's so cool. Even the container ships are pretty in the Bosphorus. <laughs> <laughs> and we have come back up to Istiklal Street because it's time to sit down for dinner. Like we said, we're having dinner at a mehane. A mehane is a type of restaurant in Turkey that serves raki and wine with mezes and other traditional foods. First, you start with mezes that are meant to be shared. You enjoy a small bite of food, a small sip of raki, and a small sip of water. The table at a mehane is known as a locksmith table. The primary intention of sitting at one of these tables is to enjoy great conversation. So take your time, eat slowly, drink slowly, and enjoy yourself as the Rocky and or wine help to unlock the conversation. You can choose to enjoy a main course or not. Either way, you should settle in for a long night. This is gonna do it for us today. We're gonna enjoy the rest of this meal. Also, this is a great area if you'd like to extend your night. It's gonna be bedtime for us after this meal. Bye-bye. Oh, <laughs>